Hello wonderful people, it's Wild here. This is part one of how to build a haunted house. Today we'll be working on the walls and the lower story decorations. I'd also like to invite you to join a Halloween build competition. If you'd be interested in that, check out the Discord in the description down below. Let's get creating. Materials for this build are on your screen now. Keep in mind that these are just the supplies for this first half and for the second half that'll be in the second video. And remember that for a large build like this it helps to have extra of each supply on hand so that way you can build and break with ease without having to worry about running out of blocks. Here is the outline for today's build. You can see it is quite a complicated design for this haunted house. And for a larger project like this, it really does help to put in an outline. You can see I've marked in all the distances, so you can put in an outline just like this one to help you build and we'll be covering it over as we create. We're gonna start our haunted house by working on the base layers of the walls here. And this will be going on this solid outline. You can see these um, sections here are marked in for our posts and we'll worry about those later. For now, I'm going to start by placing a layer of deep slate tiles all the way around this outline. When I come round to this back section that sticks out, I'm going to count in two like this, then place a stripped dark oak log and then continue going around. When I come to this right hand side wall, I'll once again count two blocks in and then place in a stripped dark oak log and continue my way around. And then when I get to the front, I'm going to center a dark oak log so it's three blocks in from either side. So you can see I've got three dark oak logs in for where our floors and doors are gonna be. And then I'm gonna go one more layer up on top of all of the deep sleep tiles with some more deep sleep tile blocks. Just like that. Now that we've got this outline in, I'm switching to some green stained glass panes and we're going to add in our window locations. I'm first coming to this left hand side and counting two in like this so it's centered on this five wide wall. And my window here is gonna be four blocks high. One, two, three, four. You can see it's just a thin, hard to see stick of glass panes for now. But once we start adding in the walls, it'll become more obvious. Now I'm on this left hand side wall and once again, I'm gonna count in two from either side to place in two, four high, one wide windows. One, two. Like that. We rotate round to the back. I'm going to do the same thing again counting in two. One, two. There we go. And you should see that there should be a three block gap between these windows. Now on this face here, this five long side, I'm gonna add in just a three high window, making sure it's centered. One, two, three, like that. I'm gonna rotate round now to this right hand side and I'm counting two in and putting in a four high window. One, two, three, four. And then I'm centering again, two in from the edge with another four high window. Like that. Now I'm going to want to put a window above the door here, but we're gonna add that in as we're adding in our walls. Now for the walls, we'll be using some dark oak logs and we want to make sure we're always placing these vertically like this. I'm going to start by coming up just the four blocks to the height of the windows, going all the way around the build. Make sure when you're coming up to the door that you leave the gap above the door free. I find it easier when I'm working in creative to build up in groups of three and then make my way back around. I'm leaving a gap above this door as well. If you're building in survival, it's easy to build up in two groups of two. It's just about breaking down the height of the walls into something that's manageable for you to build. You can see as we're doing this, the windows are connecting up nicely and you're gonna be able to get a clearer picture of where they go. You can see as I'm coming around the back here, I'm going straight over the top of that window. 
and I've still left those gaps above the door. For the next grouping of layers, I'm going to start by coming to the back and just placing in some temporary blocks across here. I'll be breaking these later. I'm then going to add another three blocks on top of what we've already got. And just make sure that if you see any logs facing the wrong direction that you fix these up. Once I've built over this gap, I can break these temporary blocks. So you can see we have some very tall walls here that go three blocks above our four high windows. Now we can go ahead and put in our doors. For this I'll be using dark oak doors and I'm going to be placing these from the outside so they're flush with the wall. On this front window here I'm then going to place in two dark oak logs going upwards like this. Then I'll grab some more green stained glass panes just to put in a one window here and then fill in the rest of the wall above the door and on the other two door locations I'll just build in with some more logs straight above the top of the door and you can see I'm just going up to the height of the wall here at the back now one thing to keep in mind is that using dark oak logs means that you'll be able to see some of this texture. Now I don't mind that texture, I think it adds some character, but if you would like to keep the wall consistent even in the window frames, you could use dark oak wood here. We're going to continue adding in some more windows on the next story now and we'll be using green stained glass panes again. I'm going to count two blocks in and then build up four high, one, two, three, four, with my glass, one, two, and then one, two, three, four. So you should have two windows with a one block gap in between. Now on either side, I'm going to center my window right above the other one, so it's two blocks in from each side. Again, four high. On either of the two left and right sides, again, I'm counting in two blocks. They should line up with the ones from below. Now on the back is where we need to change up our spacing a little bit. Our first window is going to be placed two blocks in from either side. And then our next window is going to be centered. So you can do this by lining yourself up with the center of the front, which is where we have our window and our door. Or you can do it by counting. So you should have three windows across the back which are spaced wider apart. For the walls here we're continuing with our dark oak log. Now for here I'm going to be building up the whole height of the windows and then building two on top. So I'm just going to work around in groups of two here. Don't be alarmed when you're at this stage of the build. It is going to look like a big chunk of wood, but we're going to break up all of the wall here with lots of window decorations, the surround porch, balconies, and all sorts of other Victorian style haunted house features. The real beauty of these builds is in the detail, so it just takes patience before you can get to that point. If you're enjoying today's video and would like to see more tutorials like it, please consider subscribing. It really helps me out and I'd love to have you part of my channel community. And if you'd like to support me further, check out my Patreon. You get to join a server and get lots of fun benefits. There we go, we're all the way around and you can see we've got all of our windows marked out for these two stories and our walls in. Now let's start adding in some details. 
For these details, I'm going to start by using some stone brick walls. Now we're going to be breaking some of this wall block that we placed in, but it's a lot easier to start having them in than it is to just build as we go. And sometimes you need those extra blocks when creating a large build like this. So you can just see I've placed in four blocks going up on the corners here and here. Then I'm gonna come up to the level of this window and place in another four. So it should be the same height as the windows like that. Then keeping myself level with the base of the windows, I'm gonna do the same thing except going five high on the other corners of the top half of the build. So it should look like that. Now is a good time to start adding in our floors. For my floor, I'm gonna be using some stripped dark oak logs, but you can use whatever you'd like. Just remember to change out the blocks underneath the doors as well if you're going to be using something else. Now I like to keep all of my floor blocks in one direction and I like to change it up between the sections. So here I'm going to have it going in this direction as well as at the front. And it doesn't matter that it's a different direction under the door, we can define that as a different section. And then I'll have this larger section going in the opposite direction. This can help break up large areas of floor space like this. And you can use this as a handy tool to divide rooms as well. We've got this first floor in. Now we want to start adding in the level for the second floor. So I'm going to come in with some deep slate tile slabs to add in a ceiling. And make sure that you are placing these so that when you look from underneath, there's only a half slab gap between the window and the ceiling. Now of course you can choose whether you want to put a ladder or a staircase in, the customization of the inside is up to you. I also like to seal off the roof in this little section as well by placing some slabs underneath at this level here. You can see it's sitting just a little below and when I come to my interior decoration I might even put a wall in between here but for now we have a finished ceiling. I'm then just going to come out of my build and then come back up to the top to fill in the floor, once again using some more stripped dark oak logs. Now that I'm done with my floor, I'm going to start working on this wraparound veranda on the outside. I'm going to begin by placing a chiseled stone brick on top of each of these marker blocks. Now you can see that some of these are two blocks apart and some are three blocks apart. And I've placed these in a pattern so that we can have some nice archways going around our veranda. So let's have a look at these gaps. We've got gaps of three here at the back. On the left hand side we've got two, three, three, two. All the gaps along here on the front are two blocks wide except for this three wide one in the centre and that goes to the other side. And then on the right hand side we have two, three, two. I also have one block here at the back. Next I'm going to place a stone brick on top of each of these. as well as three stone brick walls. I'm leaving this one over here without the wall on top of it. I'll then place a chiseled stone brick on top of each of the walls. To create the edge here I'm using some spruce stairs and just placing these upside down connecting all the way around the outline.
when you come to this front gap here, we're going to be placing the stairs a little bit differently. I'm just going to wrap them around like this to create a little step up for where we will have our veranda. I'll be doing the same thing here, just adding some steps going up and then an upside down stair here. I'm then going to add one wall on top of these stone bricks and I'm going to switch to some spruce logs to fill in the actual walkway. As I'm wrapping these around my veranda, I'm going to keep them going in the same direction on each side. When I come to the corner, I'm going to create an almost mitered corner look and you can see I'm doing this by placing my logs going in a diagonal direction like this. As I'm coming forward, I'm just going to bring it all the way forward and then continue along. And now I'll do the same thing in reverse, remembering to create that mitered corner effect. I find it sometimes easier to reach to the corner of each like this, and then I can work my way along slowly. And it's important to check that you've mitered it on the right side on each of your sides. That looks good. Now I'll continue my way back and do the same thing as we come to the corners. There we go, we've got the base of our veranda in now. To continue on here we're going to create some railing using some spruce fences with some spruce trapdoors on top and I'm just going to place this all the way around. I like to start just by placing in the fences and then coming in with the trapdoors afterwards but you can build this in whatever order works best for you. Do keep in mind though that you want your trapdoors to be facing the same direction and to wrap around the corner like this. Now I'm going to be leaving this block here free as we're going to be creating an arch over this doorway, but I will place a trapdoor in here. Once you've got the railing in, we can start creating some arches. We'll begin with some spruce stairs and I'm just placing these coming out of each of these chiseled stone brick blocks. Some of them you'll see will connect up into little arches immediately and some of them they'll have a little gap. And the little gaps, we'll just fill it in with a spruce slab. And our arches are all in and they look really fancy. Before we add in the roof to this veranda, we're going to add in some window decorations to the lower story windows. All of the windows have the same treatment here, so once you get the hang of one, you'll be easily able to do the others. You can see I've got a stripped spruce log facing forwards with stairs on either side. Then I'll go in with two anvils and then two high with spruce fences place two more anvils on top and then create the opposite of that arch with the two stairs and then the stripped spruce log. I'll then go up the center with some iron bars and it's a little hard to see behind these archways here but we've got a nice detailed window decoration and adding this will make a huge difference to the build. Now don't forget if you would like to enter in a Halloween build competition and test out your building skills for a chance to have your build showcase, make sure you join my Discord. I'd love to see your spookiest creations.
run to the last couple of windows here on this story. Once again, following this design all the way around. Let's have a look at the build so far now that we've got these window decorations in. You can really see how they're breaking up the big chunk of wood that we had going on here. Don't forget we need to add some decorations to this front door and the window. So I'll be using two anvils, some spruce fences and creating a little archway. I'll then be creating a small frame around this small window. Just like that. And now for the other two doors. On this one here, I'm going to start the same, except I won't be able to place an anvil here. So I'll just go in with my fences and then create an archway. And for this entryway over here, we also won't have room for a anvil on both sides. I'll just be placing it on one side. And don't forget to put in your fence here. And then I'll create an arch like normal. I'll also grab a slab while I'm at it and place it on top of this fence to finish off the railing. And I sometimes like to place a stone brick wall here and this just draws your eye down and makes it flow with the shape of the staircase. Now it's time to add some roofing to this veranda. So I'm be using some deep slate tile slabs here. I'm gonna rotate round to this right hand side to start my roofing. And I'm just going to be placing it on the upper level of the slab block here. Going all the way around. And I'll just be going up to the point of this end of archway here. Then I'll just come up another level and continue round in my slabs. Next layer up. And you can see that I've met up with the wall on this little gap here, and that's totally okay. That means that we've got our distances right. And for the last layer, I'm going straight over the top of the window frames. I'll skip this section and then come forward to the front skip this section and then continue going around. And we've got the perfect spooky veranda porch cover. So now we've created the first part of our haunted house. Make sure you watch out for part two to finish off this build. I hope you'll consider subscribing and giving the video a like and I'll see you in the next one.